Hello hockey fans and welcome back to another video. The major junior system in North America has been the biggest producer of NHL talent for as long as it's been around. Whether it's the Canadian Hockey League and the three leagues within it, America's National Development Program, or even the United States Hockey League, many stars in the NHL both past and present have spent their teenage years in one of these prestigious and highly reputable leagues. Though most of these junior systems require their players to be at least 16 years of age, there have been a few rare examples of players being given an exception to the rule and being fast-tracked to the CHL a year early. In fact, just seven players have been granted this status in the CHL's 45-year history, the most recent of which being Joe Valeno in the QMJHL, Shane Wright in the OHL, and Connor Bedard in the WHL. Most of these exceptional players will go on to become stars of their respective leagues, and most of them have not only been taken in the first round of the NHL draft, they have more often than not been taken first overall. However, one player who received this exclusive honour wouldn't quite live up to the hype. This is the story of Sean Day, from exceptional status to the ECHL. In order to tell this roller coaster of a tale, allow me to take you back to March 21st, 2013, when defenseman Sean Day was granted exceptional status by Hockey Canada for the upcoming 13 14 season in order to become eligible to play in the Ontario Hockey League at just 15 years old. This decision made Day just the fourth player to ever receive this status, the other three being John Tavares in 2005. Aaron Ekblad in 2011, and Connor McDavid in 2012. Quite the talented list, eh folks? Despite being granted this status, Day's legitimacy to receive the honour was brought into question by several OHL teams, as they didn't think he was worthy of being placed in the same category as those exceptional players that had come before him. His skill and raw talent was good enough, but his hockey sense and his overall game just wasn't on the same level as someone like Ekblad's was when he entered the league at 15. These grumblings would see an immediate impact almost a month later on April 6th, as Day was taken with the fourth overall pick of the OHL priority draft by the Mississauga Steelheads. This might not seem like much on the surface, but Day's fourth overall selection made him the first and only player in CHL history to be granted exceptional status and not be taken with the OHL's first overall draft pick. Despite this minor setback, Day would soon get the chance to prove the top three teams wrong and show that he was well worth the hype as he entered the major junior circuit. Day's first year in the O would be a steep learning curve to say the least. Though he was a big kid for his age and was quite the skater, the 15-year-old struggled to see the game at a higher level, which resulted in a lot of turnovers and poor decision making, especially in the defensive zone. His quick skating would bail him out more often than not, but that was primarily because he was playing against teenagers, and if he wanted to make it to the NHL one day, he would have to fix these problems sooner rather than later. Once his rookie season was complete, Day had managed to score 6 goals and 16 points in 60 regular season games, and a lone point in 4 playoff games. Not quite as good as Ekblad's rookie year with the Barry Colts, but still a respectable season for a 15-year-old playing against 16-20 to year olds. However, his on-ice performance was about to be the least of his worries. In late October 2014, Sean's older brother Scott was arrested by police after he crashed his car into an oncoming vehicle and killed a 62-year-old woman while she was driving her 10-year-old grandson. Police discovered that the 22-year-old had been drunk behind the wheel at the time of the incident, as Scott's blood alcohol level was over twice the legal limit. After pleading no contest, Scott was convicted and sentenced to serve no less than 57 months and up to 15 years in prison. As you can imagine, this news hit Sean pretty hard. Don't get me wrong, what Scott did was absolutely terrible, but you can only imagine the kind of impact that something like this has on a 15 to 16 year old kid. As one of four brothers, seeing one of his idols both on and off the ice be sent behind bars must have affected Sean's emotional and mental state quite a lot. In fact, during an interview with Sportsnet in 2016, Sean recounted that he had only been able to see his brother once since he had been taken to jail, so he had gone from seeing his brother every single day to him practically being non-existent in his life. Instead of ignoring this reality and letting it slowly eat away at him, Sean used his brother's situation to motivate him. 
with sky-high expectations from his coaching staff, the hockey media and fans alike, and with the weight of the hockey world on his shoulders, Sean used these off-ice issues to help discover a newfound love of the game. Sean wanted to live up to the hype and make it to the NHL one day so his brother could come and see him play on the sport's biggest stage when he finally got out of prison, and he didn't want to end up like his brother did. However, this dream wouldn't come easy for him. Following his brother's arrest, Day would spend the next two and a half seasons with Mississauga and look to put the past behind him by continuing to improve both his fundamentals and his point production. This desire to play better, coupled with him growing up to a similar age as his competition and feeling more comfortable in the OHL, would help Day make a noticeable improvement in his numbers, as he scored 19 goals and 63 points in 123 regular season games, as well as 3 points in 7 playoff games. During this time with the Steelheads, Day would take a big step towards his dream of playing in the NHL, as he was drafted by the New York Rangers in 2016. Though he was once expected to be a top 5 or even first overall pick, Day's continued struggles to see the game at a high level, combined with his alleged conditioning and attitude problems, meant that the 18-year-old didn't just get bumped down a few picks or slip to the latter half of round 1. He fell all the way to the third round of the draft, where he was taken 81st overall. As you might expect, Day's worthiness of being granted exceptional status in the first place, as well as his reputation as a highly touted prospect destined for the NHL, was once again brought into dispute, as he became the first player to be granted exceptional status that wasn't selected first overall at the NHL draft. Losing contact with his brother clearly had an effect on him and his game, but I don't think you can claim that that was the sole reason for his fall in the rankings. After all, his raw skill was still there, but there were underlying problems in his game and supposedly his attitude that were stopping him from reaching his full potential. Nevertheless, once he had been chosen by the Rangers, Day would decide to stick around in the OHL for a few more years in order to fine-tune his game and put himself into the best position to succeed long term. Would this work out for him though? Well... After starting the 16-17 OHL season with Mississauga, Day was traded to the Windsor Spitfires just five games in on October 19th, 2016. Thanks to a fresh start, Day was able to really kick his production up a notch when he joined the Spitfires roster, as he scored 16 goals and 53 points in 85 regular season games, as well as 5 points in 7 playoff games. The defenseman would also receive several accolades and achievements too, such as helping Windsor to clinch the 2017 Memorial Cup thanks to a 1 point plus 3 performance in 4 games, as well as signing a 3 year entry level contract with the Rangers on March 8, 2017. Though he had improved his play noticeably, Day's performance still wasn't impressive enough for him not to be considered expendable, as he was traded to the Kingston Frontenacs midway through his second season with Windsor on January 1st, 2018. Happy New Year, Sean! This marked the second time in just two seasons that Day had been shipped off to a new team, which once again brought the hype surrounding him into question and furthered suspicions that Day wasn't the easiest player to coach. This change of scenery, coupled with him playing in the league as a 20-year-old overager, would benefit Day's production greatly during the 17-18 season, as he would take his impressive start with the Spitfires and kick things up a notch even higher when he made it to Kingston. The former third round pick would score a goal and 25 points in 23 games with the Frontenacs, bringing his season total to 4 goals and 47 points in just 50 games. He also added 14 points in 16 playoff games too, so not only had he gone almost a point per game from the blue line during the regular season, he had become pretty clutch in the postseason too. With his final year of junior eligibility complete and having registered 158 points in 291 OHL games, Day hadn't exactly lived up to his exceptional status. In fact, he had produced the lowest points per game of any player to receive exceptional status in CHL history. Damn, he really couldn't catch a break with all of these bad records, could he? You could argue that Aaron Ekblad only scored 116 points while he was in the OHL, but he reached that number in 116 less games than Day did. So yeah, Sean definitely hadn't lived up to the hype. Regardless of his turbulent junior career, Day decided that he would turn pro for the upcoming 1819 season and join New York's AHL affiliate in Hartford with the hopes of impressing the Rangers brass, working his way up the depth chart, and getting the opportunity to make his long-awaited debut in the National Hockey League. 
However, Day's time with the Rangers wouldn't be much better than his stint in the juniors. On October 5th, 2018, Sean Day would make his professional hockey debut as the Wolfpack hosted the Providence Bruins. Though he had the opportunity to get his pro career off to a good start and show what he was made of, the former third round pick would struggle out of the gate. His start to the year would be so slow that he would quickly be demoted to the main Mariners of the East Coast Hockey League shortly after the season began. So just a few weeks after leaving the juniors, and having once been destined for NHL stardom, Sean Day found himself in North America's third tier pro league. Once he had arrived in Maine, Day would finally show glimpses of the dominant player he was once projected to be, as he scored 4 goals and 15 points in 19 games, and earned a place at the ECHL All-Star game. However, Day's resurgence had caught the attention of the Wolfpack, and the team brought him back to Hartford before he could attend the event, after returning to the AHL, Day would spend the rest of the year on the team, but failed to have any sort of major impact, as he notched just 3 goals and 14 points in 46 games. Unfortunately, his sophomore year as a pro didn't start much better either, as the defenseman scored just 4 points in 16 games to begin the 2019-2020 AHL season. By this point, the hype and expectation surrounding Day had all but disappeared, as he had shown both the Rangers organisation and the rest of the hockey world that he couldn't even make a name for himself in the minors, let alone the NHL. As a result of his disappointing production, the Wolfpack would send Day back to Maine, where he would spend the rest of the year and score 20 points in 36 games before the season was ended prematurely due to the pandemic. Having brought his on-ice struggles from the juniors to the pros, and having shown clear signs of regression since joining the Rangers organisation, New York felt that Day had outstayed his welcome and decided that a change needed to be made. On May 30th, 2020, it was announced that the Rangers had placed Day on unconditional waivers for the purpose of terminating his contract with the team. So just seven years after being granted exceptional status, seven years after joining the OHL as a 15-year-old and being projected to be an NHL superstar, Sean Day had spent much of the past two years in the ECHL and had become an unrestricted free agent for the first time in his career. If that's not one of the biggest falls from grace the hockey world has ever seen, I don't know what is. To be honest, if he hadn't have been given exceptional status or been talked about by the hockey media so much over the years, I doubt that Day's contract termination would have been worthy of a news story. After all, how many other third round picks who never make it to the NHL get more than a one line tweet from Bob McKenzie or Elliot Friedman when they have their contract terminated? Not many, I can assure you. Now, I think there's a lot to be taken from a story like this, both defending Sean and as a cautionary tale to players that wish to follow in his footsteps and join the CHL early. Firstly, from an on ice perspective, I think a moral to this story is that players should never try and rush to the next step on the ladder if they simply aren't ready for it yet. For example, a lot of the shortcomings in Day's play came from his inability to read the game at a higher level and the reoccurring mistakes in his own zone. Well, before joining the OHL, Day was playing for the CompuAir AAA Under-16 team in Michigan and was refining his game with one of the best youth teams in the country in one of North America's best development regions. If Day had decided to spend another year in Michigan, like the rest of the players his age had to, instead of trying to jump to the OHL a year early, he would have been able to refine his game against players his own age for another year, allow himself to get more comfortable in his growing body and stature, and the CompuAir coaches could have helped to iron out the creases in his game and moulded him into a more complete defensive player. By pushing ahead to the next level instead of being patient and waiting until he was ready, Day's game would continue to carry clear flaws that have affected his performance both in the juniors and the pros to this day. Another important note to take from this is that hockey players are just as human as the rest of us, and they too can go through some real struggles. Yet any sign of weakness or underperformance on the ice, and they are seen as simply not good enough or labelled busts. Imagine being a 16 year old kid, and you find out that your older brother, the person you have looked up to and tried to emulate your entire life, has been taken to jail because he killed someone. That's gonna mess you up pretty bad, huh? Now imagine you've got that mental and emotional baggage always on your mind, and you're also this super hyped prospect whose skills have been doubted by some people since you were 15 years old, and every mistake you make is put under the microscope for the entire hockey world to see. 
most players, especially teenage kids, simply can't handle that kind of pressure. Sure, guys like John Tavares and Connor McDavid seem to deal with it fine, but we don't know what's going on behind the scenes for them either. Did they go through an equally scarring event like they did, or were things a lot smoother sailing off the ice for them? We simply don't know, and some players are better at hiding their issues than others. Of course, you can't place the blame for all of Day's on-ice struggles solely on this, but I would imagine it's a pretty big factor towards it, you know? Especially early on. The biggest lesson I think everyone should take from this story, though, is that people shouldn't be so quick to overhype young players or expect too much from them when they are still trying to find their way. When a player has a surprisingly good season or shows flashes of strong play, both fans and the media are ready to crown them a star or the saviour of their team. But if they slump the next year or they don't quite live up to the hype, people start calling for their head, claim that they're a bust or demand they be traded immediately. Once again, you could make the argument that guys like Tavares, Ekblad and McDavid all dealt with the hype and the immense pressure to perform just fine, but that can be attributed to the people around them that help them understand how to deal with the situation just as much as it can be attributed to their own maturity level. After all, if most 15-year-old hockey players were told that they were going to be taken with the first overall pick in the draft, they will likely go one of two ways. Either they will get super cocky and entitled, and they will feel like they don't need to work hard or put in the effort, which could see them fall flat on their face in the long run, or it will cause them to overanalyze everything they do and feel like a failure over every mistake they make because the expectations are so high. The player will be hesitant to take any risks as they don't want to jeopardize their draft stock, and they ultimately fall in the rankings because they don't put their entire skill set on display or show what they can really do in a game situation. I think it's fair to say that Day had elements of both of these paths, which is why he was unable to live up to the lofty expectations. And looking back on it, perhaps Hockey Canada should have listened to the critics a little more and should not have granted Day exceptional status. However, when you have a kid that is the size of an NHL player at 16 years old, is a tremendous skater, and is showing all the signs of being a top talent in his age group, not just in America but in the entire hockey world, you can't really blame Hockey Canada for granting this status, or Day for even accepting it. To most, he looked like the real deal at the time. Now, it's worth pointing out that although he's been hyped up for the past seven years, and has now seemingly faded into obscurity, Day is still just 22 years old at the time of this recording. He may not be the player he was predicted to be, but Day has already found a new home for next season, as he signed a one-year, two-way contract with the Tampa Bay Lightning just six weeks after being bought out from New York. What is it with the Lightning and acquiring X-Rangers all the time? Given his recent performance, it's likely that Day will get the opportunity to crack the Lightning's AHL roster in Syracuse, where he could be used as a third-pair defenseman or the seventh D-man for the upcoming 2021 season. If he can't crack the lineup, though, Day could see himself back in the ECHL instead, this time with the Orlando Solar Bears. So, will Day's move to Syracuse help him finally live up to his once lofty potential? Probably not. Will he make it to the NHL one day? Perhaps. Could he still have a good career though? Absolutely. Whether he is able to make it to the bigs or not, Day is still young enough that he has a chance to reinvent his game and his role on a team, rebound from a shaky start in the pros, and carve out a respectable career in the minors or even overseas. It may not be the most glamorous position to be in, but at least he's still getting paid to play the sport he loves. I'm sure many fans wish they could say the same, you know. Though he clearly didn't live up to expectations, and his play has been underwhelming at best, Sean Day has experienced both the greatest highs and the most crushing lows that a hockey player can go through in their career over the last seven years. In doing so, Day has become the poster child of the dangers that come with hyping young athletes to unattainable levels, and is a reminder of why players shouldn't rush to the next level before they are actually ready. Add to that a family tragedy at a young age, and Day has gone on quite a unique journey since his exceptional status back in 2013. He may not have become the player he was expected to be, but Day has had one interesting career so far. And that's the story of Sean Day's journey from exceptional status to the ECHL. What do you guys think about Day's career up until this point? Do you think he'll be able to bounce back and find himself in the NHL one day? Did you know about this story with Sean Day or some of the background to it? 
Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye. A big thank you to Antti Hananen, Chris Gadsby, Connor B, John Plomin, Jordan Whitehead, Martin Tolnus, Paul Malia, Roman from London, The Legacy, and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.